Assalamualaikum, Yali Madad, to all the viewers um, who is listening or watching us at the moment, and um, and the listeners who will watch this one later on. Um, I'll start with my introduction. Uh, my name is Sayed Asad Ali Takwi. I've been living in Melbourne, Australia since 2007. Um, by profession, I'm in education. I worked in um, public and private education sector, starting from TAFE um, to um, colleges, RTOs, and university. And um, my qualification, I study animation. That's that was my hobby that I that I study. Um, and uh, I'm a local uh, Nath uh, Hamd Noha Mankabad reciter in Melbourne. Uh, I've been reciting uh, when I was very young, I'm still doing it. So most of the people know me because of that. Uh, enough of myself and a uh, little bit information about Tim, uh, which I know that I know Tim for a long time and it's been a while that we didn't catch up. So uh, Tim Blight, he teaches English in uh, Australia and in Pakistan. Um, and uh, that's his profession, and uh, and Tim travel as well. He traveled pretty much all over the globe, uh, and he's have more experience than me uh, in terms of traveling. And uh, he love um, traveling Asia, uh, and he teaches English there as well. So, and he have his own channel called uh, Urban Dunia. Um, so, did I miss anything, Tim? Do you want to add anything? That's about it. That was a really good lead in. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. So to just to kick off, I just want to start with the NAT uh, for for my non-speaking English uh, or non-speaking um, uh, um, non-Muslim uh, uh, people that are who are watching at the moment who don't understand NAT. NAT is just the praise of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I just kick off. Well, uh, starting with the nath, just a quick nath, and then we'll uh, get into our topics. So, um, salawat Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I'm pretty sure if you don't understand what I'm saying in Urdu, uh, I guarantee you that it, it will sound beautiful. So just stay with me. So, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And Ramadan is starting as well. So for all my... Um, uh, Muslim uh, viewers, so um, so the beautiful nath I'm going to present right now. Sahara nahi Faaselon ko takluf hai hum se agar Hum bhi be bas nahi be Sahara nahi Khuduni ko pukarenge hum dur se Raaste mein agar paao thak jayenge Faaslon ko takluf hai hum se agar Hum bhi be bas nahi be sahara nahi Hum madine mein tanha nikal jayenge Aur galiyon mein kasdan hatak jayenge हम वहाँ जाके वापस नहीं आएंगे ढूंढते ढूंढते लोग 
थक जाएंगे फासलों को तकलफ है हम से अगर हम भी बे बस नहीं बे सहारा नहीं Praise to Almighty God and uh, blessing um, to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his progeny. Uh, viewers, welcome uh, who just joined us. Uh, my name is Asad again, who just joined us. I just want to introduce myself. And I've got Tim Blight over here. Let's just get cracking straight away, Tim. Let's just That's beautiful. Way we say it here. This is the way we say it in Australia. Uh, let's just get cracking. Let's get the party started. Let the party started. <laughs> so, so just talk about just talk about your journey. So you you've been around pretty much everywhere in, in the world. Um, but I know that you love Asia and, and especially Pakistan. So why why Pakistan? <sighs> Why Pakistan? I can't say exactly. I mean, so first of all, I should say I haven't quite been everywhere in the world because I know that a couple of my students from Latin America are watching. So unfortunately, I haven't been to Colombia, Brazil or Chile before. But you know, Hola to everybody. Hola, everyone. Como estas? <laughs> but um, in Asia, look, I, I mean, I love Asia. It's just, it's so varied and, um, you know, there's so much diversity. I mean, there's diversity everywhere, but in Asia, there is so much diversity. And um, I just, I don't, I, I don't know. There's just something about that. It's like I've been bitten by a bug, you could say. I've been bitten by a bug. And as for Pakistan, I don't know. I think um, I've made some really good friends in Pakistan. Yep. I, I, I've, I I love the food. I um, I've managed to pick up a bit of Urdu. I uh, yeah, I, yeah, that, I know that one. Yeah, so that's it sort of I don't, it sort of fits like a glove, I guess. Fantastic. No, that's really great. Like um, I've been here since two thousand seven. I'm still learning, and I, <laughs> I and I'm pretty sure who you know no. whoever. People, people who are from um, from different countries who migrated here in Australia, mm. they kind of uh, struggle with understanding the accent first of all. Uh, cool. And myself did the same thing. Like I, I've learned and uh, throughout my journey. Um, so talking about English language, and then we'll get back to Pakistan and and then your travel. Sure. Um, what what do you think? Any language, just not just English. Uh, any language. What, what's what are your tips that uh, that you think uh, people require to learn a language? Definitely. I mean, to learn a language, it, the more practice you can get, the better. Um, I always tell my students, I mean, I'm not, I'm not good at English because I was born in Australia. I was, yeah. I'm, I'm good at English because I use it every single day of my life and I have yeah. for my entire life. So, yeah. I mean, that's why people become good at a language and that's how they do it they do it because they practice and um yeah. i mean i teach english i have taught english in pakistan and um yeah. i teach english in australia as well and yeah. i mean a lot of students from many countries come to australia simply to study english and yeah. um I, I mean obviously they choose australia or they choose an english-speaking country because they get the practice. Um, it's not like when you're studying in Pakistan. When you're studying in Pakistan, you know, you have your three or four hours a day in the yep. school, and then you come out, and then it's back to Urdu or back to Punjabi or Pashto or whatever you're speaking. The mother language. Uh, or... Yeah, the mother language. Whereas when you're in Australia, you're actually forced, or, or any English-speaking country for that matter, you're forced yeah. to speak the language that you want to learn. Um, yeah, that's, 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 that's I was going to say, that's certainly how I picked up Urdu. I mean, I had been trying to learn Urdu or maybe Hindi for a couple of years before I went to Pakistan. Um, mm. But I didn't get anywhere. And then once I got to Pakistan, then it really picked up. Yeah, yeah. People, um, especially, do you have any message for, for migrants or international students who who want to get a certain band? I'm pretty sure there is a research I've done in, in Channel 7, I think it's Channel 9. Okay. Um, they, they put... Um, uh, uh, local local uh, students mm. from university who who born born in Australia to do yeah. the IELTS IELTS test. 
and sure. it seemed like they don't even clear the tests because it was too difficult for them. So, yeah. Yeah. What, what do you what do you think? What what's your what's your tips? I'm 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 pretty sure that you have something. Well, I mean, I, I yeah, um, I I, I, w I would say that I know it's a cliche, but don't give up. Um, it can be done. People do do it, and yeah. um, uh, it is tricky. I mean, you know, in in terms of um, I mean, what I said before that it helps to sort of be in the country that you want of the language that you want to speak. Um, that helps, but it's not everything. I mean, you see people who speak very good English, but they've never been outside of Pakistan. So, yeah. I mean, it's more about the practice, not necessarily which country you're in. Um, yeah. And as for, I mean, trying to achieve a certain band in IELTS, I think um, the point that you made before is a very good one, um, that uh, a lot of native speakers, in fact, wouldn't get the band in IELTS that perhaps some non-native speakers yeah. want to achieve. And I think that sort of speaks to the fact that IELTS, I don't know if I should sort of say that I'm not a huge fan of the test format, but I think that IELTS definitely, it's not just about English, it's also so, mm. sort of about examination skills. Anyone who's mm. done IELTS would know that. Mm. And um, So, I mean, that's, that's, I guess, my biggest tip is as well as, practice and make sure that you're practicing as much as possible. Make sure that you sort of, I guess, understand the test and understand that it's a slow process. It takes time. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, let's just, let's just make it a little bit spicy in term, in terms of the accent and Australian accent. There's lots of uh, different saying in, in, in Australia and yeah. most famous one, the one I like the most is how the Australians say, Hey, gown. Hey, yeah, man. Hey, hey yeah. Hey, hey yeah. Man. Well, this, oh, hey, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this, this <laughs> hey going is just, is it what, what I understand is when you go, when you go to country, yeah. it changes. Yes. In city, in city, it's, it, it is different, but if you go to country, it's different. But if you go to country, um, then, then it, they say, hey, yeah, man. Hey, yeah. Oh, it's a bit nasal, isn't yeah, it? It's from, like, it's from the, yeah. from the yeah. nose, yeah. whatever. So yeah. what 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 you're saying with hey yawn or 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 a tar that short form of thank oh you God, even, I know even so even people, even, this, even, this, the, the, even people don't know but we, I mean there are people who say ta t a instead of thank you I mean that's not something that I ever learned or grew up doing but it, I mean okay. people do say that yeah that's it that's it it's called it's called discount in in thanking somebody <laughs> it's like shortened, it is shortened. Exactly. yeah uh, i mean it's australian true. english is definitely it's a dialect of its own and it's something which um i mean i to be honest i don't speak particularly uh, with a particularly strong accent and i don't um yeah. have a very i guess um, i don't speak a lot of australian i don't use a lot of australian Lang terminology yeah. um and i mean it's not it's not to say that it's wrong or it's right it's nothing like that but it's just i guess yeah. i i always put it down to i mean having i think being an english teacher is part of it and yeah. i think that um living outside of australia is another part of it i'll never forget the time that i asked some that i asked somebody and this is years ago and this is when i used to speak more australian slang than i even do now so i mean this is yeah you know, um, I mean, I, I don't speak much nowadays. I used to speak a bit more. I asked someone from France if they had been to uni, and they were like, <laughs> you, "Like uniform or like?" And I was like, "No, uni, like university." Yeah. And then in the end, he got it. But um, you know, at that point, I realized I was like, "Wow, you know, it's yeah. like it's really yeah." Because <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that as an English teacher, you don't you don't want to sound a hey, yeah man hey yeah to your towards your students so they will say my my uh, teacher <laughs> comes from a um, of our countryside were you conscious of i guess sort of how you know you how you would like your students to sound because sometimes and, and i mean people are perceptive they pick up on things and then occasionally yeah. you hear it back and you're like did you get that from me yeah. <laughs> but i mean it's yeah. not that it's bad but it's sort of like you yeah. surprise yourself but then the other thing also is that obviously the more um I don't know. I, I don't. I wouldn't even say countryside, but I'd say sort of. Uh, what's the word? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to use. I don't want to use Bergen. Yeah. No. Because I mean, that's the thing, though. I mean, it, 
you know, we say it sounds broken, but I mean, to be honest, it's not even that. It's, it's just a very strong way. accent. And um, yeah. the thing is, I mean, it, the more you use that, the students can't even understand you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure that I, I knew all the new migrants were related to that as in myself as well when I when I moved here in 2007. Uh, I found it difficult to understand, yeah. and uh, even you know, even conveying my message yeah. uh, to people in 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 supermarket, they might not understand sometimes. Well, I mean, I compare it to. I mean, I learned Urdu in Pakistan, but also with a teacher from a book, and the book was written in Karachi, I think. Yep. But it was sort of based on like you know pure Urdu with like yeah, all the like, legend. Like, all the like, legend like, comes from. All the land had come from Karachi, you right. Yeah. So, and I mean, living in Lahore. Yeah. It's like, you know, I mean, trying There's to. There's more legend I, there. I mean, do they not speak Urdu? Yes, they speak Urdu. But the way they speak Urdu is the same way like Australians speak English. It's yes. not that it's wrong, but it's just that it's very particular to that, um, yep. to that city or that part of the world. So, yeah, I mean, that's what it's like. And, um, you know, definitely people would say, oh, there's a proper way to speak English. It's the Queen's yeah. English. Or, you know, yes, you should yeah. speak Urdu, like Lucknowi or Karachi, yeah. what you would do yes. and all this. But yeah. at, at the end of the day, like, you're, the whole point is to communicate and be understood. So understand. as long as that's like, okay. yeah, Because yeah. every different part of Western countries, they have different sort of uh, way of speaking English. Like a British yeah. uh, accent is completely different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The American accent. I mean, American accent is, is very difficult. Very difficult. Very. But British accent, British accent, it sounds sound perfect. Why it sounds perfect? Because they say a proper wording. That's the reason it sound perfect. I don't want to praise the English uh, pe people, or, or they're gonna <laughs> get really um, happy with that one. But I'm just saying, <laughs> is it because they speak um, a proper words or? Well, I think um, I think that. You know, I mean, obviously English comes from England and um, I think that that's why there's a certain, maybe we could say bias towards that. But yeah. um, definitely I know that a lot of students say that American English is somehow easier to understand because in American English a lot more of the sounds are realised or pronounced. So, I mean, oh. for example, here we have a glass of, in Australian English we say water, and mm. in British English, it's water, but in American well, English, water. water. Yeah. And I mean, it's spelt the same way, but in American yeah. English, they actually pronounce the R on the end. So I know quite yeah. a few students find that, I mean, American English to be much more logical than British or Australian yeah. English. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I think I... with British and Australian English, there are, there's definitely a thing, at least with British English, people sort of say, there's like an art to it almost because you know the words aren't pronounced the way that they're spelled. Uh -huh. and yeah. like that, the way they say, Come on, do some work, don't be lazy. Come on, chop chop. Come yeah, on, geezer. Chop, chop. <laughs> Come on, geezer. Do it's some work. Like don't be lazy. Than I do. Come, on. <laughs> Come on, mate. Come on, quick sticks. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There's definitely. I mean, there's a lot of slang in Australian English, and it's um, it's very particular to Australia as well. Yeah. yeah. What I found is, is any language, um, mm. it's just more confident. Like if you have a confidence, then yeah. then you can utilize your confidence towards a language. Uh, there's some people who are like in Pakistan. I've seen like um, they're. They, they they got so much involved in the grammar. I yeah. understand that you yeah. have to use the grammar, but yeah. not everybody in general, like the way we talk, and we don't use no. that much grammar. We just say mm. it's just the flow. Mm. Well, I mean, I found the same too, you know, when I was learning Urdu, that, you know, I mean, for, what, three years before I went to Pakistan, I was trying to learn Urdu in, in Australia, and I just wasn't getting sentences together and so on. I mean, it just wasn't working. And um, then I got to Pakistan and you have to eat. For, you yeah. know, that's one example. So you get to the supermarket and you can't find what you want. So mm. you have to use your Urdu and it doesn't matter. I mean, if you, if you, you have to try it, you have to make it work. If you mm -hmm. think that you sound stupid, incorrect, 
whatever. I mean, it, all of that just stops, it stops mattering because suddenly you're standing there with, you know, Dukan Wala in front of you yeah. and, and you have to make it work. And you would have felt the same as well when you came to Australia. I mean, I, I know that your English was pretty good before you came, but mm -hmm. when you're standing where, in a place where you have to use your English, suddenly, you know, all of that, I guess, anxiety, you forget that because you just have yeah. to do it. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So how how well is your Urdu? Let's just try it because that's Dude, a high level. Have a list in how good your Urdu is. So I have to say that my Urdu is not so good. Actually, because I am from Australia, so I am from Australia. So obviously, for six months, I didn't practice so much. It's not that I didn't practice. Look, <laughs> like in actually, yeah, bohot para masla hai Urdu mein mere liye to jo yar thi ya tha. To, ah, like in um, uh, I mean, me, meri Urdu kafi, I mean, bilkul mujhe kafi samajh aati hai. Samajh mein aati hai apko. Acha acha. Pakistan mein the kafi apne Urdu jo hai seeki hai. Dosto mein seeki hai zada apne. Dosto se or actually mere ek teacher hai to um or actually yeh bilkul achi baar hai kyunki I mean you know Urdu mein teacher matlab ustad lekin ham am to par ustad ke alfaz nahi istemal karta hai kyunki I mean ustad kaise like you know basically you know like it's like an old person that you know yeah 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 it's just like you know Ah, but in meditation, so basically that I mean natural language, sort of a difficult thing. Because, yeah, but in meditation, which means strong, callous, which is what Urdu says. Ah, absolutely. So, but in meditation, Lahore, Lahore, so his name is Nabeel Rahman, and um, or uh, or Nabeel or Rahman, or absolutely, uh, I mean, like a sefarish character, like I recommend him. Because yes, yeah, 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 very, very, very good guy. अच्छा 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 उनकी तारीफ कर रहे हैं आपके वो बहुत एक अच्छे इंसान है जिससे आपने काफी चीजें सीखी मतलब उर्दू उर्दू ज़मान आपने उनसे सीखी हाँ बिल्कुल बिल्कुल और अभी हम हम यू नो इतने किताब इस्तेमाल करते हैं लेकिन ओब्वियसली किताब सिर्फ काफी आई मीन इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं क्योंकि ओब्वियसली तीन ब्राइड आप उर्दू लिखते हैं अच्छी मैं उर्दू पढ़ सकता हूँ और लिख सकता हूँ तो लिखना और लिखना इतने इतनी अच्छी नहीं है लेकिन अभी काफी है बिल्कुल मेरा नाम लिख सकता हूँ सिंपल झुमला लिख सकता हूँ बिल्कुल पढ़ सकता हूँ तो लोग तो बड़े लोग तो बड़े हैरान होते होंगे आपको पाकिस्तान में या कहीं भी जाते होंगे हिंदी या उर्दू बोलते होंगे तो लोग काफी हैरानी से आपको देखते होंगे कि यार ये तो जानता है हमारी ज़बान तो इसके सामने हाँ लेकिन कभी-कभी शायद मेरा पता नहीं मेरा शकल से पता नहीं लेकिन कभी-कभी जब मैं शलवार कमीज पहनता हूँ तो पटान लगते हैं आप जी बिल्कुल ज़्यादा लोग सोचते हैं मैं पटान हूँ तो और खास के जब मैं आई मीन पाकिस्तान में मैं बाइक हर साल चलता हूँ चलाते हैं तो जब मैं शवाक में इस पेंट हूँ, बाइक चलाता हूँ और ये ऐसे उर्दू बोलता हूँ, तो कुछ लोग सोचते हैं मैं पता हूँ, लेकिन कभी-कभी अभी दो, तीन, चार जुमले के बाद तो बोलते हैं हाँ, एक्चुअली वो पता नहीं है, लेकिन दिल कभी-कभी वो सोचते हैं हाँ, तो शायद वो आई मीन हाफ पाकिस्तानी शायद है, तो क्योंकि आम नहीं है। I mean कभी-कभी गौरे, I mean उर्दू बोल सकते हैं, ये ठीक है और हिंदी बोल सकते हैं, ठीक है। लेकिन पाकिस्तान में रहने हैं भी इतने आम नहीं हैं। हाँ, ये तो है। लेकिन ये कि जिस तरीके से आप बोल रहे हैं, आप सही कह रहे हैं। इस तरह के आपको experience experiences मिलते होंगे, जिसपे लोग समझते होंगे कि आप जो है बाहर ह� लगते गोरे हैं लेकिन बोलते उर्दू इस तरह हैं ऐसा लगता होगा लेकिन I should give you that कि आपका माशाल्लाह से उर्दू बहुत बहुत अच्छी है मतलब जिस तरीके से the way you think आपकी उर्दू मेरी इंग्लिश से ज़्यादा अच्छी है नहीं नहीं बिल्कुल भी ऑफिस में मेरे ख्याल है आपकी अंग्रेजी मेरी उर्दू से बेहतर है तो लेकिन शुक्रिय
उर्दू उर्दू जो है वो आप समझते हैं आ, अगर कंपेयर करना जाए जबानों का जिस तरह इंग्लिश आप इंग्लिश पढ़ाते हैं और उर्दू आप बोलते हैं तो आप समझते हैं कि सेम मुझे सेम स्किल्स लगते हैं दोनों को समझने के लिए चाहे जो भी जबान हो चाहे वो इंग्लिश हो या उर्दू हो बिल्कुल सेम स्किल्स है जो आई मीन एक जैसे है क्योंकि आई मीन बेसिकली जुबान जुबान है तो और आई मीन कोई स्किल जैसे है क्योंकि मतलब आई मीन अगर क्या चीज लाइक यू नो गाड़ी चलाते हैं ये आई मीन वट एवरी यू आर ट्राइंग टू डू तो गाड़ी चलाते हैं ये जुबान बोलते हैं ये क्या इवन आई मीन एक्चुअली आजकल मेरा चैलेंज है टीचिंग ऑनलाइन है लेकिन बिल्कुल आई मीन आज तकरीबन एक महीने से मैं ऑनलाइन क्लासेस चल रहे थे और आई मीन बिल्कुल पहली दिन बहुत मुश्किल था लेकिन आज बिल्कुल बेहतर है तो आई मीन जुबान ऐसे है द मोर यू डू इट द बेटर यू गेट ठीक है तो आप अपने आप को कैसे मेंटेन uh, रखते हैं उसको उर्दू समझने के लिए किस तरीके से क्या ताकि वही स्किल्स uh, जो है वो जो इंग्लिश सीख रहे हैं वो स्ट्रेटेजी यूज करें तो या वो कि वो प्रैक्टिस में रहते हैं आप उर्दू के या किसी से बात करते हैं इसी तरह से आपसे प्रैक्टिस में रहते हैं तो जबान सीखते हैं और मजीद हाँ जी बिल्कुल आई मीन मैं सब स्ट्रेटजीज इस्तेमाल करता हूँ तो मैं आई मीन जब मैं ऑस्ट्रेलिया में हूँ तो मैं मेरे टी और अपने टीचर मिलते हैं स्काइप पे ये मेरे दोस्त तो ऑस्ट्रेलिया में आई मीन कुछ इंडियन है कुछ पाकिस्तानी है तो मैं कभी कभी उर्दू या हिंदी गाना सुनता हूँ तो हाँ तो आई मीन ऐसे है लेकिन ऑब्वियसली जब पाकिस्तान में हूँ तो ऑब्वियसली बहुत आसान है लेकिन लाइक मेरा ख्याल है अंग्रेजी जैसे बिल्कुल एक जैसे है क्योंकि यू नो इवन अगर पाकिस्तान में रहते तो ऑब्वियसली ज्यादा अगर ज्यादा अंग्रेजी इस्तेमाल करता तो ऑब्वियसली उसका उसकी अंग्रेजी बेहतर होगी अंग्रेजी बेहतर होगी हाँ, क्योंकि ये उर्दू क्योंकि इंग्लिश का ये है कि थिम कि इंग्लिश क्योंकि बहुत ज्यादा बोली जाती है दुनिया में हर जगह और, और, और पढ़ाई भी जाती है जैसे पाकिस्तान में तो कॉन्सेप्ट ये है कि अगर अंग्रेजी बोलता है तो इसका मतलब ये है कि वो बहुत पढ़ा लिखा है मुझे पाकिस्तान से मोहब्बत है लेकिन I mean, मैं जानता हूँ हम जानते हैं ये I mean हकीकत है reality है um, obviously पाकिस्तान के पास इतने मसले है education sector में लेकिन even Australia में I mean इतने मसले education sector में नहीं है लेकिन है I mean ज़्यादा पढ़े लिखे लोग हैं ये और हुई लेकिन यह हुए लोग हैं ये यू नो obviously इतने पढ़े लिखे लोग नहीं है नहीं है अच्छा तो लेकिन सब अंग्रेजी बोलते हैं तो तो यू नो बेसिकली शायद पाकिस्तान में ऐसे यू नो सोचना आई मीन आई मीन मैं समझ सकता हूँ लेकिन पूरी दुनिया में ऐसे नहीं है तो आई मीन जापान देखो जापान में इतने लोग अंग्रेजी इस्तेमाल नहीं करते हैं कुछ लोग इस अंग्रेजी समझते हैं लेकिन आई मीन बेसिकली वो हर से जो प्राउड है यू नो प्राउड लोग मेरे ख्याल है ये बहुत अच्छी चीज है क्योंकि वो जापानीज है तो हाँ तो ये है इवन आई मीन मतलब प्राउड वो प्राउड है अपनी जबान अपनी जबान को लेके अपनी नेशन को लेके प्राउड है इसी तरह रशिया भी है इसी तरह जर्मनी भी है जो अपनी जबान को प्रमोट करता है बिल्कुल बिल्कुल और मेरा ख्याल है पाकिस्तान में भी आई मीन इट शुड बी पाकिस्तान को होना चाहिए लेकिन असल क्योंकि असल में वहां पे एक तरह से एक रिवाज ऐसा बन गया है कि अंग्रेजी को ही सब कुछ समझा जाता है अनफॉर्चुनेटली क्योंकि वो असल में जो तालीमत हैं आपकी वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज से जो आती हैं कि एडवांसमेंट 
जो बहुत सारी चीजें तो उसको देख के समझते हैं कि अंग्रेजी जरूरत अंग्रेजी की जरूरत बहुत ज्यादा है उनको इन टर्म्स ऑफ यानी मतलब किसी चीज को अचीव करने के लिए जो है अंग्रेजी की उनको जरूरत पड़नी है चाहे वो नौकरी मांगने जाना हो या वो कहीं सोशल गैदरिंग हो या कुछ भी हो उसको जो है हाइलाइटर बनाना है तो अपनी जबान को नहीं वो अंग्रेजी इट्स इट्स थिंग टू बेसिकली इम्प्रेस समान Well, it's a social marker, isn't it? And social I mean, the, yeah, yeah. you're right. I mean, you're basically Baharajana. I mean, it means that you have studied abroad or that you've been abroad, and that also then relates to like you know, acha to you know, Bahar gaya to you know, Andrezi samajati hai to ye matlab basically Amir admi hai to Amir admi. <laughs> like it, it's all of that, and it's a historical thing as well. So I mean, I don't blame Pakistan for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but 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 people around the world who who doesn't speak uh, English uh, or second language, huh. but this but, but but people who who speak really good, uh, even though it's it's not their mother tongue, but they're doing great. Amazing. I'm not saying myself. Uh, I'm not. No, no, no but honestly, you are. I, mean, I think them. everyone is who does because it's not it's not most people's mother tongue. Uh, and a lot of people have had to learn it and a lot of people speak it very well so uh, yeah because uh, because the thing is that people find uh you know their mother tongue because they find themselves comfortable speaking in their mother tongue of course like jis tarah aap jo hai jis tarah main abhi urdu bol raha hu i find it uh comfortable ke main urdu aap se baat kar raha hu aur aapke liye jo hai wo struggle hai kyunki wo it's your second language it's not your first language Yeah, exactly. I mean, even I mean, bilkul Urdu me, you know, Urdu, you know, mere liye bhi hai. Because obviously, I mean, me Urdu is still part of the home. But in, you know, it's if I had a choice to speak Urdu, or I mean, I really enjoy speaking Urdu. But this is the thing, you know. Agar and even at this very moment, you can see this. If I have a message which I want to get across, which uh-huh. I want the message to be very clear. Do Angrezi is not cut there. Are you using Angrezi? Angrezi is not very uncomfortable. Yeah, and we all do yeah. it. We all do that's, it. That's true. That's that's true. Yeah. Achha, that's talk, true. Uh, achha, talking about your travel. So, your mm-hmm. travel is suffering. Ah, ji. And I know that you uh, have been to Saudi Arabia. You have been to Pakistan. You have been to Saudi Arabia. You have been to Pakistan. You have been to Saudi Arabia. You have been to Pakistan. You have been to Saudi Arabia. You have been to Pakistan. You have been to Saudi Arabia. You have been to Pakistan. You have been to Saudi Arabia. You have been to Pakistan. You have been to Saudi Arabia. You have been to Pakistan. You have been to Saudi Arabia. You have been to Pakistan. You have been to So I've had some of the most amazing experiences in the Middle East. I first went to Iran in 2004 yep. and um I traveled all around the Middle East and then I went back again a year later. Mm. Um I most recently in the Middle East went to Saudi Arabia for Umrah. Mm. And um that was I mean incredible. You know, there are no words for that. You know, that's just it's like amazing. Yeah, amazing. I mean, if I can relate that to I guess, you know, like a western alternative because I, or a equivalent, I should say. It's not the same because obviously the Umrah has the spiritual dynamic dimension to That's it. That's correct. Well. You cannot explain it, yeah. Yeah. You But they have to I feel mean, it. It's like the thing of the you know when you grow up in in a foreign country and you're always seeing pictures of the same place whether it be like mm. the Eiffel Tower or Disneyland or mm. Buckingham Palace or whatever. and then you find yourself standing in that position like right out front so i mean it's that but then on top of that there's the i guess the spiritual connection and everything which is i mean that's ultimately why you do it so you know i mean you don't go to umrah as a holiday so um and um but it's and, and it's not a holiday because it's i mean it's beautiful but it's heavy mm. I mean, how was how was how was your how was your um uh, you know a feeling towards that kaaba towards towards that um uh, a shrine uh, a grave of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you've been to uh uh janatul baqi as well the the grave yes, there so what, was, yeah. what was yeah. your what was your what was your um cuz cuz i uh, cuz most of the people listeners i just tell you that uh tim knows a lot about islam uh tim have some incredible uh, you know uh learning capability that have learned about islam so that's why i'm just uh mentioning those those area key point because he knows um a lot lot about islam 
Oh, Jazakallah khair. Lekin, I mean, I don't think, honestly, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, I'm not a... I'm not expert, a scholar, like, a scholar yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, it's that thing of that... I mean, the Kaaba is that you are really at the center of the world. You yep. know, that when you arrive there, I, I, I think, and for me, I mean, when I first walked in, uh, I don't know anyone who's been to Mecca who has been there, you would know what I'm talking about. When you first walk in, the actual masjid, the mosque, is not as big as you, th well, I mean, it's big, but the, from the moment you enter it from the outside until the mm. moment when you can actually see the Kaaba, yeah. it's not that far, actually. I mean, you walk inside and then you walk, probably 30 seconds and then it's just there, like it appears and yeah. i mean that moment it takes your breath away it's um i've i i made a vlog about it actually when i went back to sort of you know because i wanted to experience to do my umrah but then also of course i wanted to share it with people who you know follow me so i went mm. back to do the vlog um mm. later that same day and mm. I mean, even approaching it the second time, it brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, and it takes your breath away. And then yeah. being in Medina, I mean, Medina is, it's very different. I mean, Mecca, you just feel like you're at the center of it all. Whereas Medina, it's much slower. Um, you feel like you have time to take it in. And it feels really beautiful, you know, like, I mean, seeing, you know, like the Prophet's mosque and the, you know, Janet al Baki and all this, like seeing all of that is just, um, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely, to be honest, there's definitely something because I'm quite, I don't want to say this, but I'm quite cynical when it comes to a lot of things. So, you know, I mean, there was, a, there was that part of me, which is sort of a natural built in part of me. I think my parents, God love them. I think they have taught me to be like this, that it's like, you know, when you get to Medina, everyone told you that it will be incredible, but I mean, they are all just, you know, like this, you'll get there and you'll see what it's really like. Well, yeah. I sort of had that in my mind a little bit. I got there and I still felt it. So felt it. Nice I mean, it. there's something there and it's, it's inescapable. Yeah. Especially yeah. like you, you wouldn't know when you're there, like you yeah. cannot, you cannot any nobody can express it um, yeah. if you if you haven't been somewhere. So. It's like walking. I don't know. It's like I, I mean the closest I can say it's like being like flying. It's like walking in the clouds or something. It's very amazing. nice. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's incredible feeling. Yeah. yeah okay. Got, talk about so now. Now talking about your uh, your ziarat. You, 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 uh, um, I've seen your photos. You you've been to Karbala. Yeah. You did yeah. all that. Um, the machine you to yeah. walk. You so I that arrived in Najaf in Iraq and walked to Karbala, which is, as a lot of you will know, that's 80 kilometers. It took us three days and I did the whole thing barefoot. Very nice. And, um, I arrived in Karbala. We went to uh, the shrine of Imam Hussein and then I soon after that went to a uh, medical center to, for someone to look at my feet. Because... I see. <laughs> 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 and the what doctor was very nice. He was just like, honestly, it's not that bad. Yeah. Just go home, take a you know ibuprofen, and go to sleep. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> how great is how great is that whole journey? That every single uh, fight. Mm -hmm. I, I personally, you know, I, I pray every day that I just go there. Um, never get an opportunity. Inshallah, I'll get an opportunity to go there. But what I've seen is that every single um, two hundred meters or hundred meters, there is a camp where you can rest, you can eat and all that. How was your experience? Uh, it's not even 200 meters. It's almost okay. wall to wall. Is it? Okay. Almost yep. wall to wall. On the entire 80 kilometers from Najaf to Karbala on that highway. I mean, at the, except for the last day, but then that's not because they weren't there. That was simply because it was the end and they were all starting to pack up and we were actually quite late. Like we arrived late at night. So mm. by that point it was all, you know, the Mishi, the pilgrimage was almost, well, the, the walk, I should say, was almost over because everyone had arrived. But um, no, I mean, it's every, it's wall to wall. It's like one camp finishes and the next one starts after this. Um, people handing out food and massages and I mean, like, you know, foot massages and information and sort of religious experiences and drinks, places to sleep. Um, mm. 
I mean, it's it's incredible. And from all around the world as well. You know, I mean, I saw one stand was set up and they were selling crepes. It was a group from France that had turned up, turned up and they were selling like French crepes by the roadside. So, wow. I mean, you, know, you go there expecting Iraqi food and maybe Pakistani. But <laughs> <laughs> like it was, I mean, and, and, and what that shows is just sort of like the international nature of it, the amount of, respect and what this means to people and how it yeah. unites people and brings them together um yeah, yeah. i mean it's great you know like you walk along and the food's great and i mean of course the food's yeah. great but, you know yeah. it's sort of the, what that represents is something so incredible it's like um this, it's just the millions power of, people, of having, yeah, having the power of that yeah the same cause um it's like that at, I mean, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't like that at Umrah. It's like that at Umrah as well. But I think the thing with Umrah, number one, I don't really like to compare them because they're quite different in many ways. But I, I also think that it's an obvious comparison in some ways because, and, and especially because I did both of them, the Ziyarat and the Umrah within six months of each other. Um, at Umrah, you get all sorts of people there and people who are on different programs and different timetables and they've arrived at different times and all this. And I mean, all that's wonderful and they all have their you know, intention for being there, which is amazing. But the physical, like the feeling in uh, Karbala of everyone gravitating towards this one place on the same day, um, you know, it's, it's something quite different and uh, it's, uh, it's incredible. But, I don't know. I mean, they're both so special in their in their own ways. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So if I ask you this question, like, what, what, what um, I don't want to say one line up, but mm. you, you've been there to Karbala, you've been to the shrine of Imam Hussain, uh, al Islam. So what was, what, what, what's, what's the uh, experience or what sort of feelings do you, you uh, experience over there? Because You've seen the millions of people mm. in Karbala during Ashura or uh, Arbaeen. What mm. was your uh, feeling there? Did you feel something different in terms of um, going towards the shrine or, or, or being inside the shrine? What was your... Because I just wanted to say, uh, mm. as, a, as an Australian, what was your experience there? Um, I think... Um... I mean, definitely being in Karbala was something special, but it, it, it's kind of different as well because, I mean, for example, being in Medina, the whole place sort of feels special. In Karbala, the city itself is pretty, you know, pretty cool and incredible, but it's really when you get to the shrine and especially inside the shrine, you have this feeling like you've arrived and it's almost like you've arrived home in a way. Beautiful. Um, but then I, I don't. But then I don't know. I mean, I can't. I like I use those exact exact same words to talk about arriving in Medina. So, mm. um, but yeah, it's like that feeling. It's that 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 is what is similar about them, though. It's that sense that you've arrived in a place that you always knew. Beautiful. Mm. I I thought that. Look, I'm not a particularly emotional person. You know, I don't, I mean, I'll watch movies and I don't cry a lot. I mean, you know, and so on. But I thought that when I got to the shrine of Imam Hussein, that um, I thought that I would start crying. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I didn't, actually. And it, that really surprised me. I remember sitting there and just thinking, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? You know, like, am I, mm. am I that dead inside? You know, mm. so, like, surely I have some emotion. But it wasn't that. It was like, it was like closeness. It was warm. It was home. It was sort of like that. It was almost like a feeling of being loved. Yeah, I was saying. And, so well, uh, you know, I mean, that was incredible. I cried when I got to the Kaaba mm. in Mecca. Mashallah, um, Yeah, but I, uh, you know, getting to the shrine of Imam Hussein. I mean, I did cry at various moments throughout that from various emotions. But um, mm. yeah, that, that first moment of being there, it was just sort of like I don't need to cry. It just sort of felt like it connected. Yeah. Connection, connection. Everybody over there, like I've, uh, I've, I've met and I've heard. It's just a connection, even though uh, you don't know. It's some some people, for example, if they're there just mm. to experience, they don't even know, for example, Imam Hussein that much, but they're connected. 
in a in a such a way that they as you mentioned that they 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 feel like that they know uh this this personality for for a long time well remember I mean, the same that said that you know i had been to medina and mecca with the idea of okay well let's see you know <laughs> like that cynical person inside of me um and i thought i mean i don't know you can say what you will about that it's not that i want to be that person i guess i just am um mm. but you know i felt it so you felt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Felt there's it. something there there's yeah, something there yeah, there's yeah. something yeah. there yeah. There's something yeah. there which you, as I say, you which you feel if you mm. if you're there. Once yeah. you're there, then you know. Inshallah, I hope you can get there one day. And all the yeah, people who are you. Yeah. whether you're Muslim or not, regardless yeah. of who you are, I hope that you can get to there sometime because it really is just the most incredible feeling. Yeah, you know I'm saying yes, hundred percent. And then your journey from Kerbala to uh, Najaf. How was your experience there? I uh, like back, Najaf. back to Najaf after the uh, Najaf to Karbala. Sorry, on oh, Najaf to yeah. Karbala. I mean, that was look. It's um, you know, it's a strange thing because you know, obviously, you're there because you know it's a morning, isn't it? It's yeah. uh, you know, it's it's morning the death of you know Imam Hussein and everyone who was with him at the time, and also you know the entire family, um, but. At the same time, there's something about being with so many people who are there on on the same page, if you like, and um, it's it's actually really beautiful. I mean, we, you know, stuck for a lot if well, I'm saying something wrong, but it's like we had fun, you know, people being together. And it's not that you're there for the fun. I mean, I don't. I want to make it very just clear. The connection, just, just the connection. Even though you're, you're not making fun of like, oh, you're yes, you know, I'm doing yeah. part of it. Like, yeah, even though you couldn't, even though they they speak different languages than you, but yeah. it's connecting that you know exactly uh, each it. other. Even exactly. though you don't know each other, but you know each other the way That's they exactly behave, yeah. friend friendliness and uh, all that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's um, and it, and it's such an amazing thing. I mean, it's I I learned so much. I um, I don't. I know it's a cliche to say you know I grew, I changed, but I think I really did. You know, I really. I developed as a person and, um, you know, I would love to go back. Um, inshallah. 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 But I'm, I, at the same time, I'm very grateful for what I have. You know, I don't, um, I don't want to sort of be like, oh, you know, one time wasn't enough and all this. I mean, I'm just so grateful yeah. for the fact that I got there at all. I think my belief is just that it's, it's an invitation. Mm, exactly. You, exactly. you will get you will you will, you will be there like if, if you're invited it's like your guest exactly exactly you and are, you'll be there again yeah. one day so. inshallah inshallah and, and in, in, yeah thanks man we need thanks, to get inshallah. to Kurbala. 100 percent, man i'm i'm I'm, Maka, dying and to, inshallah, I'm dying to go to uh for umrah mm. and, and then for zarat and all that um so najaf I, I, Imam Ali, what, what, what's, what's your take? Um, so we, I mean, we flew into Najaf and we actually walked past the shrine of Imam Ali on the way out of Najaf to Karbala. So that was, I mean, we had arrived the day before and then we just sort of woke up and hit the road, I guess. So yeah. um, I, uh, and, and then we got back there afterwards and that... I mean, it's it's different. Like in, in some ways, it's the same, but it's different. I would really like to go back to Najaf actually and spend some time at the shrine of Imam Ali for, um, I guess, like how do I say this? I think because we passed it very quickly and then got to Karbala and then we were there at the shrine of Imam Hussein and then we went to a couple of different places around Iraq. We went to. Um, uh, uh, Kazmain, and then we went to Samara and so on. So I think by the time we got back to Najaf, I mean, it was, of course, it's amazing, but it, um, mm. it, I think at that point it was kind of like we were kind of, I don't want to say we were on the way out of Iraq, but I mean, we knew that we were leaving the next day and we knew. Yeah. It was, um, quick. It, was it was quick, but I don't regret that, obviously. I mean, it, you know, it was amazing and beautiful and um, it feels... You, you know, you do feel, uh, though, that when you get back to Najaf, that you're going back, in a way, 
to sort of like the origins of the story. I mean, it's not the origin, but it's further back in the line of yeah. history. Okay. Like history. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, you, you feel that you do feel that definitely. Um, we mm. were there on the 28th of Safar, which mm. is, um, I believe in Iraq is, uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of people say that it's the Shahadat of Imam Hassan, mm. but I think in the, the local community in Najaf also mark the, um, or the passing of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on that day oh, as no, well. No, no, no. Yeah. I don't really know enough about the history there and I won't comment yeah. on it, but yeah. We were there on that day, and I mean, to be yeah. at that place on that day, mm. I mean, mm. wow, you know, it's just like yeah. the passion and the, you know, know. The, the gravity of, you know, that mm. place, it's, it's amazing. And, and you know, you know, it's like you have the, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his son-in-law, you know, the, like, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Do you find those places uh, peaceful and safe? Do you find, uh, yeah. It, 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 yeah, and the people around that, yeah. those areas? Yeah, I do. Um, the only thing I would say is that I think, um, I, th I know I wrote a bit about Iraq when I had been, like just after I had come back, and I don't know how I would feel in Iraq if I wasn't there at the time of um, Arbain. And I don't know how I would feel in Iraq if I didn't know people there. Mm. Um, whether they be other people on pilgrimage with me, on ziyarat with me, mm. or even local Iraqis who, you know, I was lucky enough to have made contact with a couple. Um, I don't think Iraq, look, I mean, nowhere is safe. But, uh, you know, anything could happen anywhere, God forbid. But um, I do think that, I mean, Umrah, uh, you know, Mecca, Medina, I felt completely safe there, absolutely completely safe. Um, Ziarat, I felt completely safe while I was on Ziarat, but on the 28th of Safar, when we actually took a van back from um, Najaf to Karbala at about nine or 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. and it was just myself and a friend of mine and um, who I was traveling with, but I remember just thinking, I mean, I didn't feel, I, I, look, I didn't feel that I was in danger, but I remember just sort of thinking, okay, the crowds have dispersed. You know, this is You're like by yourself in your eight days after Arbain, the crowds have dispersed. We're in a van going along the highway in Iraq at 10 o'clock at night. Um, you know, the only, I guess, uh, um, the only non-locals in the van. Um, I, I, I don't, it's not an issue about being local or foreign or anything like this, but I, I just sort of remember thinking like, anything could happen and people may not notice. Yeah. Um, but then, I mean, I was, that's, that's just, you know, that's just a thought that I had. I certainly didn't feel in danger. And I should also temper this by saying that I would probably feel quite similar, I guess, in Australia late at night. I mean, if I got yeah. into a van from Melbourne to Sydney at 10 o'clock at night and no yeah. one knew where I was going and I was there alone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that thing of like, you know, I just don't know. Whereas in, you know, uh, at Umrah in Medina, Mecca, I never had that. So yes, yeah, it's just, just a bit different. Yeah. Mm, nice. Now talking about, um, this global, uh, pandemic. Yeah. It's pretty much crazy everywhere. It's, you know, uh, what in Australia, we are on stage three. Mm. Most of the Western countries, they are, have locked down, uh, in, in Asia as well. It's locked down. Uh, what what do you and, and and I'm pretty sure that you're not stocking up uh, a tissue paper. Uh, not, you don't no, have that many tissue paper a, that you have. have. I can, you can sell it here online. <sighs> yeah, I know. So apparently, toilet paper is gold nowadays. Like you know, if you I want see. to invest, you buy toilet paper. Okay. So, um, That's you uh, no, and unfortunately, you know, like it was like Bitcoin. You know, that took off before I noticed. So. You know, if someone was spreading rumors about toilet paper, and by the time I chose to invest, it was too late. So, <laughs> I could be rich. The hand sanitizer, I think. That's another yeah. business. Sorry? Hand sanitizer, another business. Hand sanitizer is another one. And things like um, staples like, you know, bread, rice, and pasta 
as well. Yep. But the thing is, yeah. they're perishable. Whereas e even even uh, uh, baby wipes are out of the shelf. Yeah. People are just taking those ones as an alternative. So my brother's a plumber, and yep. he was just like I like he. I mean, he was joking, but he was just like. I'm just thinking about how much money people like myself and you know, us plumbers are going to make when people start flushing baby wipes down the toilet at the end of all of this. <laughs> well, buddy, yeah. Um, you know, baby, baby wipes, what, uh, kitchen roll, you know. Yep. Any, yeah. Anything, anything. So, yeah. I mean, on a serious note, though, I think, um, you know, it, uh, it sort of highlights just how vulnerable people feel in the face yeah. of something like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I um, I don't know. I obviously, you know, the world is in lockdown. Um, yeah. I do have for anyone who's worried. I do have toilet paper there, but it wasn't bought as an investment. It was just <laughs> <laughs> I was yep. fortunate enough to have some. Like I never thought I would say yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the market now it just become normal now. It, it's yeah. not um, like before. Now yeah. around the world, as you know that. Um, because coronavirus is uh, COVID-19, COVID mm, it's, yeah, it's a yeah. really serious, uh, you know, virus. Mm. And uh, we've seen videos of uh, people who got affected and it's a, mm. and there's no cure. Um, yeah, yeah. And it, it spread from Wuhan, China, and then now around the globe. Mm. Um, and it, 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 it's, it's so serious. That's the reason, uh, you know, countries are being locked down because of that and i i do hope that i mean my i guess my concern about this is that the economy will not cope and when i say that i mean i want to really qualify what i'm saying about this because there is i mean it's not as you know sort of straightforward as it sounds me saying that um the world runs according to a capitalist system and whether we you know whether we like it or not that is how it is and a byproduct of the capitalist system is that money needs to keep flowing around, otherwise people are going to starve. And we're not necessarily talking about, you know, luckily people like probably you or I in this, you know, in this situation, but I'm talking about, I mean, I live in Pakistan for half of every year. I mean, I already see large numbers of people who are going without. I even see it in Australia to a certain extent. So I just, but at least in Australia, you know, you know that there might be some some more hope, I guess, of that there might be welfare for people, or like a net to catch them. Um, yeah. A lot of people around the world don't have a net to catch them. And, you know, yes, we need to be really careful about coronavirus and we need to make sure that people are not infected from and dying from that. It is a health emergency after all. But at the same time, we don't, we also, I think, need to be really careful that the world that we've built in the past however many, you know, decades or centuries doesn't come crashing down on the people who are the most vulnerable simply because we're trying to protect other people's lives. I mean, yes, coronavirus can kill people. We know this, and it's very serious. Poverty and conflict can also kill people. And um, unfortunately, I, I, I mean, it's one of my biggest concerns is that poverty and conflict will actually be a serious byproduct of you know us locking down the world we created and really shout out to those people who are working here in australia and yeah. in um, around the globe in pakistan like in pakistan there's so many organizations like there's ed there's there's chifa there's jdc who's, who's yeah. been doing really yeah. great yeah. Uh, in, in, yeah. in australia we have um, uh, pakistan a PWOA uh, who's doing a great job um, supplying groceries uh, and food to needy people, which is great. So as an individual during this crisis, um, we can do whatever we can. I mean, exactly in right. terms of supporting, we have to look after each other. That's all because we are we, we are all here together uh, to fight against this COVID-19. That's right, and I re and I really, you know, I really salute those people. I mean, not just the people who are putting their lives on the line to, uh, you know, treat people who yeah. may be or do have COVID nineteen, um, or you know, the people who keep the supply chains open and the you know the people who still go to work in the supermarket and pharmacies. A friend of mine, his father works in a pharmacy, and you know, he feels like he takes his life into his own hands every time he goes to work. Um, but it's not 
just that it's also the people who are thinking about other people at the same time you know that they are donating they're making sure that there's enough food to go around and all of this so i you know i really salute those people because i think that that's what's needed at a time like now we need to protect ourselves that's what why we're locking down but we also need to make sure that we look after other people 100 percent, 100 percent. so to conclude uh, do you have to say anything like to conclude of a chit chat well i would like to say thank you so much for having me on here it's a great idea and it's great uh, to catch up with you too it's been too long brother we need to when all this is over, you, yes when all this is over we are heading out for 100%. coffee and 100%. yeah chocolate cake or something like this I don't that's know. It. We'll find some, that's at the moment it. there are so many things right. I would we might we food. might we might skip that one because uh the way we eating food uh at home i don't know about you, you but yeah i'm just oh yeah on weight, so i just have to skip that one afterwards because i'm yeah, on yeah, yeah. okay so we'll go for a run together <laughs> <laughs> we'll go and get a gym membership together that's it 100 uh, but um i'd just like to uh you know i'd like to thank you for having me here and i'd like to um you know say oh, yeah. hello to everybody that uh um you know that i've that is watching this and thank you so much for tuning in stay safe stay healthy um especially i'd like to say thank you very much to my uh and i mean i know this sounds like a cliche but thank you very much to my employer and my uh you know colleagues in melbourne i work at a school called discover english and um it's it's wonderful i mean the way that they've all pulled together and everything i know that it, i've seen a couple of them logging in and watching this and the way that everyone's pulled together it's just been fantastic so and then finally, um, you know, please do drop by my website sometime. So it's Urban Dunia. Um, you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And uh, I'd love to be in touch with anyone new, a anyone and everyone. Please get in touch. Fantastic. And talk about um, your book. I think we uh, we forgot to discuss yes, about a little bit about course, your book. Yeah. So show us show us your book that uh, that uh, that you you mentioned before, uh, Pakistan travel. A little, little bit uh, about sorry, this book. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> So this is Pakistan Traveller. Um, this is my book, which is a uh, travel guide to Pakistan. It's the uh, only travel guidebook to Pakistan on the market nowadays, which covers as much of Pakistan as it does. I've seen some like um, a smaller or maybe more restricted guides, but um, it covers all of Pakistan. Um, it's available through my website, which is urbandunia.com, but it's um, also, it, it, that'll send you a link through to Amazon, where you can order it through there. Um, I'm currently, this is the second edition, I'm currently working on the third edition because this was out in 2017 and a lot has changed in Pakistan in three years. So um, I would um, I would like to, uh, yeah, just, you know, sort of, I'll show you a bit inside. Got a nice picture of, La uh, sorry, map of Lahore there. Lahore, eh? Recommendations. In fact, I believe you're from Karachi originally, is that right? Yes, I am. Yes. So... Uh, we have. I'm not uh, buying your book if it's if if it's Karachi is not there. Of course it is. Oh, there we are. Oh, Where are we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Karachi <laughs> and all the recommendations <laughs> of the best place to go and everything. And I'm currently yeah. updating it. Actually, I'm currently working on the Karachi chapter of the next edition. So hopefully later right. this year. Very nice. No, I really thank you for uh, you know joining in uh, in a short notice. And thank you very much for your time as well, Tim. Tim, it's been a, it's been a while, as I said. Yeah. And uh, I, I really thank every single person who's watching at the moment and who will watch later on. Yesafar Hamara bought a start uh, starting say or abitak. So I'm really uh, a special thanks to our uh, partners uh, PWOA, who's doing great job in in Melbourne, uh, and uh, our radio partner Sanji Awaz, our Sajid Turi bhai, who's doing great job in, in radio, Sanji Awaz. Um, so you will watch uh, this same video on their channels as well. Um, uh, so which is which is really good. I really want to shout out to our um, healthcare workers who's doing great job out there. They're risking their life in hospital, like doctors, nurses, or anyone who's, who's out there working. I, I really salute you. I really appreciate that that you 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 know you're risking your life for us for uh, we are as i said we are all here together um this time will uh pass and everything will be back to normal um and um yeah thank you really very much and and we might 
come back again with another topic or another video if 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 the team's got some time. Why and, not? Um, I think I would like then, to. Yeah, we should. Yeah, it'd be, it'd I'm be not going awesome. anywhere. So. Huh? I said we're not going anywhere. I mean, we're, not, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. There are four rooms no. in this apartment. I'm going to be in one of them. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> so again, uh, really, really thank you, every single person. Then, uh, inshallah, dobara malakat hogi. Tim ke saad ya kisi aur mehman ke saad to stay tuned. Apna bahut khayal rakhega. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good afis. Goodbye. Good afis.